live to tape. Welcome to Millennial Season 2, Episode 35. I'm Andrew. I'm Laura. And I'm Matt. Where the hell is Elisa? Elisa is currently in the emergency room of oh. Silver Spring Medical. Yeah. Um, this is concerning something that she stuck up her butt last week. If you guys want to hear more about that, I'd recommend listening to After Dark so you can just stay um, attuned to her condition. They think they are going to be able to get the object out. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to take some time. It's pretty far up there. That was you the hint. most honest <laughs> the most disgusting After Dark installment we've ever had. It was for episode 234. Mm-hmm. You will die. Yeah, I don't think any of us were surprised by it. No, not at all. You know how people say, like, online, I'm screaming! I was literally screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We have the audio to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> um, I did some online shopping afterwards. You know, I was also screaming the other day. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I really like a musical artist named Bruce Springsteen. Who? What? He has his first autobiography coming out later this month. Um, in just less than a week now, actually. And as most authors do, they're um, he's going on a book tour. And so he's doing a bunch of cities around the country, a bunch of bookstores. And, uh, of course, I wanted to go. It looks like, according to the details, you um, he's pre-signing the books. So you'll get a signed book at these events. But at the event, it looks like, I'm not 100% sure of this yet, but it looks like you're going to be able to take a picture with him. So pretty cool opportunity, something I would obviously want to do. Um, so I tried for Philly. Tried to get tickets for Philly. Unsurprisingly, it was beyond impossible. The site crashed, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm, I can't mm-hmm. do L.A. because of my sister's wedding. There's a conflict there. And plus, I would have had to camp out for that one. So I'm like, fuck that. I'm over camping out for anything. But um, Portland came up as an opportunity. Obviously, I would have to fly up there. It's a bit of a trip. But you know what? Worth it. Once in a lifetime opportunity. So I tried for tickets. Uh, God was with me on that fateful day. I got the tickets. I have an extra. No, I'm not giving it to anyone. I'm selling it for hundreds of dollars on StubHub. I'm eating my idol! Do you guys have any tips for how I can survive this? Um, Um, Well, I would recommend when you get there, find the bathroom. Don't shit down the leg of one of your pants. That's a good tip. Thank you. You're Maybe welcome. I would masturbate before meeting him. Yes. I know you're a nervous pooper, so. Mm-hmm. I'm not a nervous pooper. Uh, I'm thinking of <laughs> what meeting... is this? Is this is this an autobiography? This book? Yes. Yes. I, I'm thinking of maybe going to my psychiatrist, seeing if there's any additional medication I could perhaps be put on. I'm on Lexapro daily dose, 20 milligrams. I don't think that's enough, though. I think I need like 100 for that day. To prevent any you might attacks. you might need a Xanax. Yeah, yeah I, think, I have I some low Xanax. dosage Xanax. I'm definitely bringing that. I'm gonna have that on standby in the back of my mouth in case I need to swallow it at any. What? Moment. If... <laughs> what is yeah, the... there's gonna be something else in the back of your mouth by the time that's over. Um, what? What are you gonna say to him? This is the million dollar question because this is gonna be a very fast moving event. So I have to pick the right seven or eight words. I'm still working on it. It's going to be something like, I love you, I love everything. Or, <laughs> I love you, I love you. I, 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 you, I, think I, you I can, can you will just be, him? I can just see you. Like, you, when you get really excited, all you really can do is just laugh nervously and just turn bright red. It's going to go really bad. I'm worried about how I'm going to act because I don't know how I'm going to act. I've never been in this situation before. Wait, who's so... going with you? No one. I'm fucked. Oh, I'm so fucked. No, no. Yeah, that's that makes me nervous. Like, gonna who's going to videotape it? Right in front of him. I know. I. Oh, damn it. 
Someone's got to videotape this. Why don't you take your boyfriend with that extra ticket you've got? Because fuck that. I'd rather sell it for money. No, I did invite him. He can't. He he can't because of mm-hmm. work. And stuff. He doesn't want to go. No, are you? He absolutely wants to go. He was dying to go with me, um, but he can't because of it's in the middle of the week. So anyway, oh, right. it's for the best because now I get to sell this ticket and I can use that money to pay for the trip up there. So it's working out nicely. Anyway, I'm mm-hmm. so, so I'm still debating what I'm going to say to him, what I'm going to wear for our picture together. Like, what do you wear for an engagement photo? I don't know. I haven't been in this situation before. So. I will literally pay you a hundred dollars if you wear a picture, like wear a T-shirt with a picture of his face on it, <laughs> and t- and take a picture with him wearing that shirt. I. Please. I did consider that, but oh, not man. seriously, because that's lame as hell. <laughs> I know. That's why I'll pay you. <laughs> you have to do something so he can remember you, though, Andrew. You don't yeah, want to be gonna cool pass with out. these things. Uh, it's going to go bad. Anyway, I'm very excited. If anyone's up there in Portland, any listeners, maybe you want to like be with me on standby in case I need to be taken to the hospital. That would be helpful. I'm not sure if I could summon an Uber while I'm unconscious. We'll we'll give you a free month of Patreon if you take Andrew to the emergency room. <laughs> Buy me a drink. I know for sure. As soon as I leave, I'm gonna have to run directly to a bar and take a shot to chill down, and then start editing my photo so my skin looks perfect perfect before I make it my permanent Facebook profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> it really will be too. That that that's that's what's funny about it. Is yeah. That you're not even well, and then I'm also worried about things like what if I blink during the photo? What if the person taking the photo takes a shitty photo? What if Bruce is blinking? What if he's not smiling? I, all these things are running through my head. I'm. Ugh, what if he hates trouble. you? What if he hates me? <laughs> what if he doesn't say anything back to me? What if I trip in front of him? What if what if I fart in front of him? What if what if uh, what if I I can't help myself and I accidentally make out with him? You know, get beaten down by that's, a security. That's called sexual assault. It would have been worth it. <laughs> worth it. Sexual assault. Worth, worth it. it. <laughs> okay, well that's that. I'll update everybody on our next. Well, not in. Uh, I'm. Do, it's happening October fourth. So assuming I survive it, we got some time. I'll update you the following week. Oh, we really don't have time. It's like two weeks from now. I know. (laughs) And meanwhile, my (laughs) sister's wedding is like three days beforehand. I give no fucks about that right now. All I'm I'm thinking about is this first spring (laughs) meet and greet. I'm really surprised you're not ditching her wedding to go see Bruce. Oh, I told I told my parents before the book tour dates were announced. I was like, you better fucking hope that one of these other dates works because if it does conflict, I'm not going to the wedding. (laughs) Becca will understand. It'll be fine. Your mother would murder you. She would. I mean, it's her first wedding. Yep. <laughs> and probably the last. Um, Fingers crossed. In the Sims family, I mean, like, my brother oh. isn't getting married and neither am I. What? Don't, d- don't write don't checks. Don't speak for cash. Ryan. <laughs> okay, fine. Maybe Ryan has a chance. Uh, speaking, love. speaking of marriage and stuff, there's bad news in the Hollywood world on Monday. Yeah. Right, Matt? on yeah, Tuesday. It's, it's, a, it's a dark day. This morning, unfortunately, uh, we we saw the breaking news that um, Miss Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie have officially separated and are filing for divorce. Mr. For Brad Pitt. Ir- yeah, I was going to Ir- say, no, how, I was, how are Miss Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie taking No, that? it was right. I, I said it right. <laughs> you just don't know. You just, you're not into entertainment, so just let me take the lead on this. It okay. is Miss. But um, the, yeah, this morning, Angelina Jolie especially has uh, filed for divorce to Brad Pitt for irreconci- irreconcilable differences. And apparently, like I was reading a little bit on it, that w- the the main issue apparently is that uh, Angelina did not like the parenting skills of brad pitt like she wasn't liking how he was raising the kids yeah what's up with that i i've been trying to think about what that means how is i don't know is he maybe he's just not spending enough time with the kids that's the only thing i could think of or he's like into the beating method of raising no I, i just i don't know what standards like angelina has for her kids because the whole that whole family i mean the whole idea is just so progressive and liberal too like they would not get married until it was legal in in 
in the country for uh, homosexuals and all, all the LGBTQ uh, community could get married. And they've adopted five of their six children. Or is it? It's a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. They have six kids. Um, and I just I just don't know what Brad did that that could have been, you know, just unacceptable so and unforgivable. Yeah, Brad. because I, I see both of them as very progressive people. So, right. Well, again, maybe he's maybe he he, he doesn't want to give his kids uh, shots. Maybe it's a medicine thing. Who knows? I mean, a, vac- a vaccine thing could be a vaccine thing. Who knows? Anyway, br- br- uh, or hmm? who cares? I care. This thing matters. Angelina yeah. is filing for total custody. Uh, Brad will get visitation rights, but no, like the kids can't go stay with them. It seems like so. She wants him away from the kitties. Yeah. Anyway, it was it was shocking because they are seen as probably one of the biggest couples in hollywood right up there with george clooney and his very Mm. successful wife who's that you can't remember that's why i think it's got to be these two no i think i think they are the america's sweetheart in entertainment george and amal no brad pitt and angelina jolie well they're not anymore it's over i i know anyway Rest in peace, Brangelina. Jennifer Aniston, to, Aniston, today is your day to celebrate. I guess the silver lining about all this is that Brad Pitt is single. <laughs> and ready mm-hmm. to fuck the... some girls. And we'll see. Let's talk about more important news, Laura. What else? Yeah, is anyway, going on? let's talk about some actual breaking news. <laughs> so over the weekend, we saw two separate bombings in New York City and New Jersey. Uh, one of these happened in the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan, and the other one was in Seaside Park, New Jersey. And the other um, one happened in the home of Brangelina. Okay. Thankfully, in both <laughs> cases, uh, nobody was killed, though 29 people were injured in the Chelsea bombing, which was horrific. Um, in both cases, there were actually other unexploded devices that were found in the nearby area. And the bomber was later arrested following a shootout with police on Monday morning. His name is Ahmed Rahami, and he's currently in jail being charged with the attempted murder of officers. Um, and as of now, Tuesday evening, there's no evidence suggests that Rahami is affiliated with any known terror group. Though the FBI is working over his devices as we speak to see if he received any formal military training during extended stints in Pakistan and Afghanistan, as well as seeing if there is any connection to a group like ISIS. Um, my bet, my, my guess is that there's going to be some ISIS affiliation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Apparently... just this, this reeks of, of ISIS. Yeah. They're really into this whole lone wolf thing now. So mm-hmm. yeah, because those are the most unpredictable attacks. They're harder Agreed. for the FBI to discover. Um, and mm-hmm. these guys work in much smaller groups, obviously. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think um, apparently one one thing that's been said, there's still very little official confirmed information. But apparently when he went over to Afghanistan, he came back a changed person. So I mm-hmm. guess he was kind of converted mm-hmm. when he made t- took a little vacation <laughs> over there. <laughs> what, yeah. what's, the, what's the story about uh, the fact that another bomb was found by some pe- some guys who were stealing a suitcase? that that the bomb was in that was the pressure cooker one yeah was um, it so mm-hmm. yes yeah, so oh yeah yeah, actually, yeah it was you're right he had a duffel bag that there was a pressure cooker in and they found that but um something that's really interesting about this to me is that um rahami's father allegedly reported him to the fbi in 2014 believing that he was a terrorist so no. the fbi has been looking into him this happened with one of the other guys too, right? A previous yep. attacker in America. I mean, I I don't want to say mistakes are being made, because I think it's very hard for, like Laura said, one of these lone wolf situations to to detect them. So it's it's sad, but I think one of the positives here is how quickly they caught this suspect. One because he mm-hmm. had evidence, kind of. He had fingerprints, I believe, on the pressure cooker. Um, Mm -hmm. They traced the cell phone records because he used cell phones to blow these things up. Um, And there was also the whole see something, say something. 
The yeah. guy who ultimately led to his capture, he, he found the suspect laying kind of in the door in the alcove of the entrance to his bar. Um, he called the police and they came swarming very quickly. Um, and the woman who spotted the pressure cooker, I saw her speaking on CNN. She was like, you know, I saw it. I just thought it was weird. Which is saying something when you think you see something in, in New York that's worth calling in. Yeah. I see a lot of weird shit and I'm never like, oh, I should call, I should call that bag in that I see lying there. Yeah. Um, I think the other critical thing here is that they got the suspect alive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there nine times out of 10, that doesn't happen. And this just gives us a better opportunity to collect more evidence. But not from a lack of trying, though. I mean, there was a shootout before he was captured. Right. And I mean, he got shot. Fault. I mean, yeah, well, he tried yeah, to fight but... back. So, yeah, I mean, the I difference mean... is that he didn't he didn't decide to take himself out. He did mm -hmm. eventually allow himself to be caught. True. He um, obviously didn't really have like a a getaway plan after that. Like, yeah, he had nowhere he... to hide. Apparently, if, no. he, if he has to well, sleep yeah. in front of a bar. No, it was well, it was almost thing. like he expected that, you know, maybe it was either a suicide or he just didn't even like think about like what would happen like what he's supposed to do after he actually plants it yeah. well that's the thing with this kind of terrorism there never is an exit strategy mm. right okay you generally accept that you're going in as a martyr um so i don't really know what what this guy's plan was but i think it's actually a really crucial thing that the police were able to get him alive i think that's going to be um helpful also his wife left the country shortly before the bombings um, she's currently in the United Arab Emirates, um, which I think definitely makes her a person of interest because leaving the country shortly before this happens doesn't look great for her. Right. And... But I hear that she's also, though, talking to some U.S. authorities. Mm hmm. And so I'm... she is cooperating, apparently, at least right now, what we know. I, I I'm laughing at the fact that he was such a shitty terrorist. Like, this guy couldn't kill one person. Come on, man. If you're going to be a terrorist, you got to kill some people. Like, of course, I'm glad nobody died. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd rather but, have horrible... If, I, if we are to have terrorists, I'd rather there be incompetent ones. Wow. But, I mean, the thing is, terrorism is not... The, this, the goal of terrorism is not to kill people. The goal of terrorism is to terrorize. Yeah. So... Good what point. they're trying to do is make people afraid to go out and walk the streets. They're trying to make people afraid to live their lives. Yeah. And I think that's what's really imperative here. We need to make sure that we don't stop living our lives. If you live in Manhattan or any other crowded public area, don't let this keep you inside. Because right. if you do that, then they win. And I know that that sounds really cheesy, but it's true. Right. The terrorists win otherwise. It uh yeah I mean he had scattered those bombs in New New Jersey and New York, and and I think another reason that people ultimate that nobody died was because there was quick action. If you look at that one that was planted near the beach, it was planted near a run intended to explode during the run, and the police shut mm -hmm. down that run and the boardwalk really quick as soon as they found it. Um so yeah I think uh, this was a case of s scary times, but also. The FBI, the government can take care of things swiftly. Mm -hmm. So good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think this was a case where the inter it shows the intervention working, mm -hmm. you know, that we were able to stop it before it caused mass, you know, carnage, which is a good thing. Um, but it's just definitely something that we're all going to have to be aware of. I think these kinds of soft targets are what we're going to start seeing more and more of. Um mm -hmm. They're not going to hijack think, planes anymore. It's going to be also, crowded uh, public places like malls and streets and movie theaters. Matt, what's our next story? Well, our next story, actually, <laughs> is um, another thing that we should not be, I guess, should not be paranoid about. But anyways, so earlier this summer... A uh, picture of Mark Zuckerberg was posted uh, in celebration of Instagram achieving 500 million users. But at, what made it so interesting, uh, at least in the picture, is that you could see uh, behind Mark Zuckerberg that his, his MacBook Pro behind him had a web camera that was being covered. Um, now, I know that we have in a previous episode very lightly uh, 
talked about this topic about like covering uh, your webcams and how ridiculous it is. But um, just recently this week, um, FBI Director James Comey, whom we all love and adore, said in an interview, uh, there are some sensible things you should be doing. And that's one of them. Covering you go into camera. any. Yeah. Covering up your camera. You go into any government office and we all see we all have the little camera things that sit on top of the screen and they all have a little lid that closes down on them. You do that so people who don't have authority don't look at you. And I think that's a good thing. I've previously thought that Zucker at first when I first saw the photo, I was like, what the hell? Zuckerberg is telling us to trust Facebook with all their data. But Zuckerberg doesn't trust his own MacBook Pro. Um, but as some people pointed out to me, Mark Zuckerberg is a very high profile, profile target for hackers. They could potentially learn a lot. They will learn a lot if they were to ever hack into his computer and his data about Facebook, potentially mm -hmm. getting some access to access anyone else's profile on Facebook, um, stuff like that. So yeah, I think people in the FBI, high profile figures like Mark Zuckerberg, Tim Cook at Apple, people at Microsoft, Google, etc. They should all lock down their stuff as much as possible. That said, I also trust Apple that they've got security of the camera under control. If that light is not on my MacBook, indicating that my camera's on, I believe it. Um, I I would like to think that Apple's got it figured out where nobody can log into my camera unless that light is on the MacBook. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that if that light didn't exist, I maybe would put something over top of it because that light is what I trust. So right. um, well, I don't. It think has we, been. I don't think normal has, people need to be doing this. I think that's pretty absurd. There, I there has been though reports of like hackers being able to bypass the light when like when what? they hack into your camera. Yeah, uh, I've seen that. Um. But again, that's that that's when they're going that's when it's very nefarious and they're going after specific targets. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't know if I'm worried about somebody doing that to me, or at the very least, like I don't do anything that interesting. Mm -hmm. I sit in front of my screen looking pasty pale. That's pretty much it. <laughs> do you ever I don't, pan yourself? I mean, not right in front of the screen. Like maybe near the screen, like you can see oh. my face. So I'm looking at an article know. from 2013. Apparently, there's a vulnerability. I assume Apple's since patched it since then. I I don't. I just don't think it's. I can see why the FBI director is warning against this. But like, what do you, are, are, do you guys put a piece of tape over your phone camera too? Both what? of your phone no. cameras, right? So no, no. we're all. Screwed. I laugh at people. So I worked in tech support for a couple of years and anytime somebody came in with their cameras on their devices all taped up, I it was so hard for me not to laugh in that person's face. <laughs> and now there's like kind of evidence that it I guess it could theoretically happen, but also I think people are really um I think people in general have really inflated opinions of themselves yeah. and think that they're far more important than they actually are. Like 99.99% .99 of humanity does not care about you and <laughs> does not want to hack into your computer. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Then watch. Next week, it's going to be all my naked photos on the internet. <laughs> I hope so. Me too. I want some videos. You already have too. those. I know, but I mean, I want some updated ones. Give me, give me more. Me, give me more. Give me. So let's move on to our next story. It is fall. We are getting there. Um, Disneyland has scattered Halloween decorations throughout the park. Target is throwing Halloween costumes down your face. By the way, I bought a BB-8 costume for my dog. $15 at Target. Thought that was a great deal. Oh, can I tell you guys what I'm going to be for Halloween? Hmm. Yeah. Let me guess. Wait, don't tell. I want to guess. Mm -hmm. You're going to okay. be a dildo. Close. Is it, it, okay, is it is it topical? Like, is it like some yes. social commentary? Okay, you're gonna well, be zombie Hillary Clinton. No, you're going to be Anthony Weiner. No, you're gonna. Be I'm Huma. gonna be. I'm gonna, gonna be 
Barb from Stranger Things. Barb. And I'm so excited. That's Barb? Great. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yes, you have the mom jeans? Be. I'm going to get a pair. I'm going to find a pair that's like two sizes too big <laughs> and belt them up like around my navel. Oh my God. Um, Are you going to give yourself yeah. freckles everywhere? I have freckles everywhere. But like Barb is kind of like to the power of two. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to get myself some a red haired wig and I'm going to get some big old Coke bottle glasses. It's going to be great. Great. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I I'll can't take wait. Pictures. Can I be your Steve? Um, he doesn't have a Steve. No, I don't have a Steve. But I want to be Steve anyway. I want to be hot and, and cool. <laughs> and big hair. I want to be 11. So basically, what you're, what you're saying is I want you to look dorky. And I want to look hot. hot as how clock. is that different? How is that different from any other day of our lives, Andrew? <laughs> oh, you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I just so I how think is Steve is insanely attractive, and I would sit on his face. He's uh, he's my he's after Robbie Mook. Hmm. I would eat a chicken sandwich, make chicken off his cock. Let's just put it that way. Anyway, so Halloween is upon us. The fall is upon us. And it's that time of year where every fucking brand wants to get in on the pumpkin spice craze. But it's just really exploded yeah, over the past couple of years. I mean, there's pumpkin spice everything. And yes. I, okay. I yeah. was going to, I was going to shit on this and I still will. But then during hashing it out today, I learned that Laura is a big pumpkin spice fan. Blah. Fucking love pumpkin spice. This is one of the areas in which I am truly a 100% basic bitch. I love pumpkin spice flavoring in everything. In the fall, I bake a lot and I do all kinds of pumpkin flavored stuff. I make these amazing um, pumpkin pumpkin chocolate chip cookies with like milk chocolate chips and white chocolate chips and nutmeg and oh my god they're just amazing and pumpkin spice lattes i don't like starbucks but i love those and i'm so excited <laughs> i'm you know, so excited i haven't had one yet Laura. PSL. PSL. Um, i have it's... not had one yet i always save my first one until it's actually cool outside so i want to wait until we get that first crisp fall day and then i'm gonna go get a hot pumpkin spice latte and i'm so excited Man. slash sorry never never I move to la you would never be able to have one yeah fuck that yeah um i find what's always interesting about pumpkin spice are the people who are like oh, it's not even pumpkin like it's not it's like cinnamon and like nutmeg but like that's it, it's not pumpkin flavored it's a pumpkin it's it's the pumpkin spice that you put in pumpkin pie so is, is can't you technically get it year round too? I mean, they always yes. have the syrup and stuff. They're just not like promoting it, right? So what the yeah. hell? No, but I, I I get it. I I guess. Um, it I don't really taste right in the fall. It doesn't taste right the rest of the year. <laughs> That's but, true. I mean, it, it tastes good at winter time too. There's there's things now like pumpkin spice bubble bath, pumpkin spice air fresheners, pumpkin spice Oreos. <laughs> Pumpkin spice oh, there's also I read a pump, a pumpkin spice latte beer can, <laughs> like pumpkin spice latte flavored. I beer. like pumpkin beer. Pumpkin I beer do, is good. Yeah, I do like. Um, Ugh. There's a there's one I'm forgetting it off the top of my head. I do like. There's a pumpkin like shandy. I really like that. Shandy. Yeah. What's a shandy? It's like it's like the summer shandies, the the lining kugel, um, pumpkin spice makeup. What pumpkin spice case for iPhone? Pumpkin spice makeup. Makeup. Yeah. And why do you know that? I'm looking at the link that I provided in the doc. Pumpkin oh. spice tea, pumpkin spice peanuts, pumpkin spice chapstick, pumpkin spice jello. Pump. There sh is there pumpkin spice lube? Pumpkin. Probably. I'm sure spice there's lube. pumpkin spice condoms. Laura, I it's... bet you'd suck on a dig all day long if there's some pipe. Oh yeah, there's pumpkin Fuck spice yeah, would. condoms. I'm ordering some for Laura right now. Oh, man. Put that in me. You got a man you can um, put these on? Maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, oh, wow. I have a pumpkin spice air freshener in my car right now. Oh, my. You are so basic. 
I know the word like and the thing is it's so I'm such a stereotype it's a Prius with a Hillary sticker on it and I have a pumpkin spice latte <laughs> air freshener <Man>. in it <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Is this a? F- I don't know if this Dorex pumpkin spice condom is real or not. It could have just been a prank or something. No. Oh, uh, I I can believe I w- it. I would like to try that. <laughs> yeah, somebody should make it. Anyway, uh, listeners, do you do you like? Is there any th- pumpkin spice stuff you like? Let us know. I'm curious. Or, any or weird not pumpkin spice stuff? No, I'm curious. I mm. will say the one I for a year or two I would get the pumpkin spice English muffins. By Thomas, which also have real chunks of pumpkin in them, so that I enjoyed those. Oh no, I love like like food that's pumpkin spice flavored, like like muffins and pumpkin uh, pie bread. Like that's that shit's awesome. But the synthetic smell of pumpkin pie spice is just a little too much. It's a little too rich. It's You're like not smelling. White enough. I guess not, man. <laughs> Baby, this color is only skin deep. No, Matt. I don't want to know what's inside. No. <laughs> don't ever yes. say that again. No. It's time for Dumpster Fire 2016. Have we just <laughs> given up on the music? <laughs> I'm trying to load up our millennial drive right now, and it's not loading for me, so I had to improvise. Oh. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. It's, you're getting closer. You're getting better than last episode. So I thought this week, because we don't have Elisa here and we're all missing her, we try to provide yeah. some of our answers to these discussion topics in her in in we want to we want to provide what she would say or use her manner of speaking. For example, mm-hmm. I feel so bad. I didn't point that out to make fun of her. I just pointed I it out because it's it's an interesting, you know, observational thing about her regional yeah. accent. That's wow, all. Wow, that's I, a I, weird I... way to put it. Well, it's true. Thur, thur, thur. So. Thur, 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 Okay, so she's I'll, gonna hate me. I'll get the first story. Um, so there was some surprising <laughs> news <laughs> over there in George H. W. Bush world. He apparently told a Kennedy that he is going to vote for Hillary Clinton on Monday. Kathleen Hardington Kennedy Towson, the former Maryland lieutenant governor and daughter of the late Robert F. Kennedy, posted a message to Facebook in which. She reveals this. She has a picture meeting Mr. Bush, and um, Kathleen writes in the caption, the president told me he's voting for Hillary. And then Politico followed up with her, and uh, she told Politico, yeah, he really told me this. So this is pretty funny news to see a former president who is a Republican, who is the son or who is the father of George W. Bush and eight, and uh, Jeb Bush saying he's voting for Hillary. Not necessarily a surprise, given the fact that Trump is a freaking moron and he took dumps all over Jeb Bush during the campaign. Also took a couple uh, dumps on George H.W. Bush's son. So what do you make of this, Laura? Yeah, I mean, I think it just goes to show that there's... um... You know, there are some people in the Republican Party who still have a brain. Um, I think that this is an example of somebody who is, you know, like him or not, agree with his politics or not. He is more of a pragmatic conservative. And he's able to see that the best way forward for the Republican Party is to let the Democrats have this one and try again in four years. This just shows how just outdated and flawed the two-party system is is that elisa's you think so? thought i don't know that's that, that's what every that's... other facebook status okay. i have says that's not what she would say at all oh my um, god you guys this is so oh my god. amazing like the nuance the of this story party the nuance. No. 
this is such a dumpster fire. The Republican Party has completely ruined itself right through her. Like, oh, this is amazing. I love T.J. You get... She's going to castrate I, you, Andrew. I, I don't even know how to begin to defend my wife. That's not... <laughs> That's not even how she would begin to approach this. Okay, what she would, would begin she to approach this by saying that somebody like George H. H. W. Bush exemplifies what the potential future of the Republican Party could be if it would decide to get its shit together. Oh, you're right. No, she I don't totally think that's what she that. would say. No, I no. I agree. I agree. She would laugh at first. If Listen. the Republican Party got its shit together, they would look like George H. W. Bush. This is amazing. I'm gonna go buy and read his book right now. I'll see you there. I do kind of feel bad. Like, I don't think this Kennedy should have gone on Facebook and revealed his votes. Y- you have a right to keep your vote private. Yeah, um, that's what I thought, too, about this. I thought, like, what it's is it really her place to say this yeah, unless exactly. he gave her the OK? I, but I, then wouldn't his party like like his like somebody still must work for him? I, you know, like honestly, a representative? well, I mean, listen, not I'm not trying to be morbid here, but he's not he he's a little long in the tooth. I don't think that he's running for public office again. Yeah, he's got nothing to lose. Who cares what well, yeah, people think? But I do think that he he's savvy enough. He's a former president. He understands that nothing that he says is actually a secret. Um and he has been intentionally quiet about all of this. Um up until this point, he's just been abstaining like that has been the comment from his staff that he is abstaining from commenting on this election which was as good as saying that he wasn't voting for trump so we knew that he wasn't going to vote republican this time anyway we just didn't have the official confirmation that he was going to vote democrat uh-huh. now we do um and it just doesn't surprise me when you look at where clinton aligns politically and where somebody like hw bush aligns politically while they do differ a great deal on a number of social issues in terms of fiscal issues and economic policy they are going to be a lot more closely aligned so i can definitely see how somebody who is sane would look at that and go yeah i disagree with her on a lot of stuff but i have way more in common with her than i do with the demagogue running on the other side of the aisle yeah He's she's qualified mm-hmm. to be president. It's it's that exactly. simple. And he is not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that he's probably looking at this the way that a lot of sane Republicans are looking at this and saying the worst thing that might happen with Hillary Clinton is that she might be a bad president. We've had bad presidents before and we mm-hmm. have survived that. When you elect Mussolini <laughs> you don't you don't really survive that that's crippling Mm -hmm. to the republic let's move on to another story now i hope this story gets traction i hope this story sticks trump Mm -hmm. has used charity money to settle some of his legal problems trump spent two hundred fifty eight thousand from his charitable foundation to settle lawsuits that involved his for-profit businesses The Washington Post reported Tuesday morning. In one case, Trump faced a $120,000 in unpaid fines in a dispute over the height of a flagpole at his Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, Florida. As part of the settlement, Palm Beach agreed to waive the fines if Trump donated $100,000 to a specific veteran's charity. And as the Post revealed, he sent a check from the Donald J. Trump Foundation, his charitable organization funded almost entirely by outside contributions. There was also stories last week. That said, none of the money in the Donald Trump J. Donald uh, Donald J. Trump Foundation came from Trump. They came from other people, but he was claiming it as money of his own. So this is another example, I think, of information that would come out if he were to have released his tax returns. And you can see why he's continuing to keep them a secret. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is uh, similar to what he did also with his uh, campaign money when he bought like. $25,000, I think it was almost like $50,000 of um, copies of his book at Barnes & Noble. Yeah. And so, he, And he used charity money to buy that freaking painting of himself that cost ten dollars to $20,000. Mm-hmm. For some reason, this doesn't bother people. We're, we've come, We've become so normalized to Trump being a complete lunatic that nothing seems crazy anymore. We need yeah. a good mm-hmm. four years to reset. Not we to just, mention that he hasn't made a single charitable contribution to his own 
charity yeah in like two decades yeah yeah so he's just been letting other people fund his bullshit which right. shouldn't come as a surprise people don't really care that you know about that shit because they just want anyone but hillary and right. they will they will just brush it. off they will brush off every single negative story about bush or about bush about trump and and just keep the focus on well you know hillary like how like she's the most unliked candidate in history you have to like it and i don't like it i have so to I'm say vote for trump. it's really awful that hillary can't move the polls more i i'm hopeful that with the debates next week there's a, a a gap that sticks is going to um appear in the polling but right now it's it's kind of sad like if i'm hillary i'm like jesus christ i can't believe that so many people actually want to vote for trump trump over me what do you make of that yeah. laura why isn't it going better for her i think that whether we like it or not, there is a really ugly underbelly to this country that has been emboldened by Trump coming out and acting as their sounding board. Mm. I think that he's given them an excuse to crawl out from under their rocks. And I do believe that there is a segment of the population that is supporting him out of frustration because they're not doing terribly well economically and they feel like they've been left behind. And so they're prioritizing that over, you know, little things like the civil rights of other people but i do think that there is a segment that is genuinely incredibly hateful bigoted sexist motherfuckers Deplorable, and i think he's just say. i yeah i yeah. think he has just <laughs> emboldened them to come out and start speaking their minds because they're seeing it in the mainstream now um and that's what's really scary i think that we've had this mindset in america for a long time it just hasn't been socially acceptable to be public yeah. about it. And unfortunately, it's also underneath the the umbrella that is uh, the Republican Party. No, they're part of the, the crazy right wing Tea Party reaction that took over the Republican Party. The Republican mm -hmm. Party in no way resembles what it did during the Reagan era. I can have respect for a Reagan era Republican. I have respect for George H.W. Bush. Yeah. I even have respect for Mitt Romney. Okay. I didn't want Whoa. Romney to win the election, but had he won, I wouldn't have been terrified for my country's future. Yeah. And fellow citizens. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't have been afraid that we were going to plunge into some freaking dystopic future. But this is what I fear with somebody like Donald Trump, and nothing seems to stick to the guy. I mean, we also just saw a few days ago that he came out and confirmed for all of us that President Obama is indeed a citizen after years of of inciting that stupid fucking years. And what gets me about this is he turned around and he pivoted the story and he said Hillary Clinton and her campaign of 2008 started the birth birther controversy. I finished it. What? Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was tweeting that there were people down there who were finding amazing things about about Obama, supposedly the truth about Obama. But it was it was all fake. He made it all up. And he needs to apologize. Of course, he won't. Um, I'm going to be interested to see if Hillary calls him out on this stuff. He has. She has obviously. I mean, call call him out at the debates. She has obviously done this in speeches over the past couple of weeks, and calling on him to apologize as he should, and for him to turn it around during that hotel promo event that he did. Oh my uh, and god! Blame Hillary was really disgusting. That whole press event was just a <laughs> it was a fucking joke. Like he was late. He was hours late. Like the press had to wait for hours for his plane to arrive. And then he doesn't talk until the very end. And he says what? Like three sentences. And it was just about the birther movement. Mm -hmm. And then he left. Mm -hmm. Like even the the press, like they were so pissed. They started like knocking down the stage. No, that's not what happened. You didn't see it? It fell, but the press didn't do that. <laughs> I, I think it was the press. Okay. I'm just going to say, I, I mean, okay, I'm not saying it, but a lot of people are. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. 
Um, yeah, well, I guess now that's behind us, the birther thing. <laughs> and finally, as we mentioned, the debates begin next week. It's hard to believe, but it's finally here. I mean, the ratings for these, I think, are going to be huge. To see a reality huge. TV star go up against a serious politician is going to be mm-hmm. very interesting. I used to think that Hillary was going to have these in the bag. I don't know anymore. I don't think I can trust her to pull it off perfectly. I think she has a good shot at pulling it off. And I hope the polls are going to start widening after these three debates that these two go through. Um, I can't believe that we haven't even seen them debate yet. Believe I'm, it. It's real. I can't. It just blows my mind. How I'm just burned out. Yeah, yeah I I'm have so excited fatigue. though. I have election fatigue and I love election years and I'm sick of this one. You know, what really scares me, we were going to talk about some of the things that we're expecting to see during the debate. I'm expecting to see two things. Um, First, Donald Trump doesn't know how to debate. We've seen this numerous times in the past. So he's going to try and turn it into a mudslinging match in order to keep the camera on him and to make Hillary look incapable of 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 discourse even though he's the one who's incapable of any kind of civil discourse hillary will probably try to deliver some really lame pre-scripted zinger and it's going to make me want to cry <laughs> um however mm-hmm. i do think when they really force them hopefully the moderators force them to really dig into some policy issues because that's going to be where she shines yeah yeah well i know you you watch hillary talk at these campaign events and she's saying a lot of good stuff and inspirational stuff and when i see her talk i'm like yes i'm with her hashtag retweet and then you listen to trump and he's just saying nothing so i really want viewers to not our audience our audience is smart i really want viewers to pay attention to what's being said and ignore the spin afterwards are these mm-hmm. candidates presenting things presenting tangible plans that that you think fit our future If Trump is just repeating very, very bad, believe me, believe me, and not giving any specific details, how can you want to vote for that? I just don't get it. And yet people have fallen for it for the past year. So I hope people go into these with clean minds. Clear minds. Don't don't hold your breath. Some people just suck. So I have this idiot cousin who is a huge Trump supporter. Um, And he was posting on Facebook the other day. He was super pissed off because he apparently got kicked out of a Trump rally for being disorderly. And he was really pissed because he's a huge supporter. And I was like, well, cousin, we are no longer Facebook friends. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) What would you Lisa say about the debates? What, what, what is she, what do you think she's looking forward to? I think she would probably echo some of the sentiment we were just talking about, about, you know, keeping an eye on Hillary when it comes to actual issues of substance, but then being nervous about how she's going to handle non-substantive issues. Um, Trump is really good, whether we like it or not, about launching character attacks. And Mm. I think that that's going to be what he's relying on. She's not so great at responding to stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm that's what concerns me. Okay. And my wife. I'm speaking for her now. I see. Well, (laughs) we will record next week's episode after the debate, which the debate is occurring Monday, September 26th. So I'm sure we will have a lot to say. Fuck me. I know. I can't even say I'm looking forward to it at this point because I'm like so scared. Who are the moderators of the first debate? It's just Matt Lauer. It's Lester Holt. Did you just say... Okay. <laughs> Fucking Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer can suck my dick. Funny thing today... Anyway. Uh, Trump said that to try and downplay his performance at the debate, he said that Lester Holt's a Democrat when actually Lester Holt's a registered Republican, so... <laughs> but a... Oops. And he is just batting a thousand with these facts. <laughs> So it's time now for Surprise Bitch. We're going to call one of our listeners, our supporters on Patreon. you see Woo! if they have anything they want to talk about. Maybe anything they're fearing on mm-hmm. the, uh, anything, the debates. Anything they've put up their butts. Ooh, we should ask that question. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever put I don't know why we butt? haven't asked this every time. Have you ever put anything up your butt that wasn't attached to another human being? Laura, pick a number between 2 and 510. 
What about one? Uh, number one is the top of the cell sheet where it says timestamp. Oh. I'll call them. <laughs> Let's do number two. Number Yay. two. Oh, because up we... your butt. I get it. <laughs> I just can't believe we've never done them. It's been well, two years. Um, two for you, two. Are you sure you want to call number two? Is there a reason we should? <laughs> number two is me when I was filling out the test form. So I was the per- well, first fuck person. Well, Andrew. Then the next one. Whatever well, we already comes did after three, that. four, five, six. How about we do number seven? All right. It's my favorite number. That's Vicky. She's up in Canada. Number seven's your favorite number? Yeah, seven's we're, my favorite number. We're really learning how, about how basic you are. You pick the lucky number seven as your favorite number. You drink PSLs. Wait. Wait, is seven a lucky number? Yeah. You're yeah, kidding. shut up. No, I'm not. You ever see a slot What's machine it? and you hit 777? Seven, seven, seven? I don't gamble. Okay. I don't know these things. Are, how how many, many books are in the Harry Potter series? Have... <laughs> you seriously Thank don't you. know that seven is a lucky number. No. Lucky I didn't number tell seven, now. Eight. I've just always liked the number. What? Yeah, because it's... Oh, God, help me. Hello? Listeners. Hello, Vicky. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Surprise, bitch. This is Millennial. What's up? Surprise, bitch. Hi. For this is the second time. (laughs) Really? Oh, I haven't had. God damn it, Andrew. I haven't had you marked down. Well. Uh, uh, I'm actually at work right now. Oh, well, you know why you got called twice? Because you're number seven. And seven's a lucky number. Perfect. It really is. It really. Haven't you heard before in your lifetime that seven is a lucky number? I have, and then it became a magical number. Okay, well, Mm -hmm. it's news to Laura. We just broke the news to her. She can't believe that seven (laughs) is a lucky number, and she's apparently dead serious about this. It really is, since I got called twice. (laughs) Yeah. I I genuinely did not know this, and I feel like an idiot. So, uh, Vicky... You're not an idiot. Don't worry. You're obviously... uh, You're a longtime listener of the show. You signed up at the beginning. Did you listen to the most recent (laughs) After Dark installment? Uh, Alatos? Yes. yes. Okay. So we wanted um, to ask you, thoughts. have you ever had anything up your butt? I have not. Have you ever been tempted to put anything up there? Not really my jam, not going to lie. Okay. But more power to people who do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Whether it's accidental no. <laughs> or not. <laughs> As someone up in Canada, are you going to be watching the U.S. presidential debate next week or... Oh, I will be, and I will probably have lots of wine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it affects you up there, doesn't it? It does. It does. Yeah. I mean, it kind of you know, I mean, everybody. <laughs> it really does. That's the thing. That's a global, uh, a global affection. <laughs> yeah, and your hot prime minister is going to have to work with him. So he really is. I feel bad for him. Do you do you think that if I promise to put something up Justin's butt, he would let me come to Canada? I mean, like, you probably don't even need to promise him that. He'll just let you come. He's that That's way. true. Oh, he's he's that so cool nice. Immigration. <laughs> How about um something we were talking about earlier was pumpkin spice flavored things. Is the pumpkin spice? I hate it. Okay. I hate yes. It. Same. <laughs> yes. Have you ever tried? Not a fan. <laughs> pumpkin spice? Yes. And I can't. I, I'm not a fan. You know, the I'm not a fan of fall. Really I'm not even. Special. I'm not ready for fall yet. I'm still in summer mode. <laughs> Would uh, what? What have you tried? That's pumpkin spice, like the Starbucks PSL. Um. Yes. I'm sorry. I have to. I actually am at work right now, so I kind of have to get back. To okay. That. Just. Just. I'm real so quick. sorry. I never want to leave you guys. Just. Just real quick. Do you hate with passion anyone who likes anything PSL? Say yes. I mean, like if. I get annoyed by it all the time. My sister's one of these people, but you know, all them basic. Yeah, yeah, they're so basic. Vicky just okay. called you basic, Laura. You suck. It's fine. So, uh, let Vicky go back to work. All right, Lucky Vicky. Number Sorry. No let problem. Go, I'm okay, so uh, thankful for a second so phone much. call. I love you guys. All but... right. Bye. Bye. Sorry. Bye. All right. Well, she's truly I think lucky. We just got someone. I think we just got her fired. <laughs> If that's not proof that seven is a lucky number, I don't know what is. And this time I marked Vicky as red, so she's not getting a third call. Oh, Sorry, Vicky. He's in the red. <laughs> yeah. Well, that concludes this week's episode. I suspect that we will have a very big episode next week with the debate, depending on how it goes. 
Hopefully, it'll swing the right way for people who care about this country. Losers. Laura, when are... Even, even the haters and the losers. <laughs> well, Laura, when do you think you will be um, getting your first pumpkin spice item? Um, it honestly depends upon the weather here in North Georgia. Uh, it it must dip below 65 degrees before I will do it. I love it when you um, say dip. Mm-hmm. So next week, it looks like it's going to be in <laughs> the 80s still. So it's probably going to be a while. I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. When I go get my pumpkin spice latte, I will buy seven of them. <laughs> okay. <gasps> oh, Lord, that's I'm, a lucky number. You think I'm joking, but I'm not. You yeah. should. Well, I'll post the picture. I'll take a picture, too. And it's like 5,000 calories. I'm going to... I'm not going to drink them all at once. I'm going to drink them, like, over the course of three hours. It's fine. Oh, that's okay, then. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm going to get seven McChickens, and I'm going to have sexual encounters with each of them. Okay. And I'm going to ejaculate in the seventh one. All right, you know what? Never mind. This isn't working out. Um... To close us out today, we're going to play this song by Becky Mack. It's called Pumpkin Spice Latte. I think it's a song that Laura can really identify with. Mm-hmm. Before we play that, though, I want to remind, remind everybody about our Patreon, patreon.com slash millennial. You can hear the most disgusting story in the history of podcasting. I'm willing to bet that. <laughs> on the most recent installment of After Dark, coming up on today's After Dark, we're going to be doing an AMA. We went in the Facebook group. We said, hey, what do you want us to talk about this week? Uh, and of course, we made it related to Elisa because we want to torture her while she's not here and can't defend herself. Thanks yeah, everyone. so most of the questions are about Elisa's butt. Perfect. I love right. talking and about we have her butt. So, we have, yeah, we have so many answers. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Andrew. I'm Laura. And I'm Matt. See you all next week. Goodbye. Bye. See ya. It's the season, bitches. Yes, out. What the <laughs> fuck? Where the hell's my piss out? Piss out, piss out. Where the hell's my piss out? Piss out, piss out. This bitch just wants her piss out. Piss out, piss out. Where the hell's my piss out? Pumpkin spice latte. Better make those drinks for frothy. Lord knows I love my coffee. Just pour that whipped cream on me. Icy, cold, or hot, and fresh pumpkin spice lattes are the best. Trench up, veggie, grande, or chocolate. PSL, flavor of the fall.